Well, good Monday morning, everyone. I'm 10 Tampa Bay Chief Meteorologist Bobby Deskins. Wanted to get you informed here on Tropical Depression 3, actually a second wave behind that as well. But as of 11 o'clock this morning, we now have Tropical Depression 3. And you look at the satellite presentation of this thing, and it looks really well. This is uh, the visible satellite. We've got winds at 35 miles per hour. 39 and above it gets a name and that will likely happen later today or tonight. This looks pretty good and it's, it's really close, right? It's moving to the west at 21 miles per hour. Pressure's down to 1,009 millibars and it is forecast to strengthen. Now the next name on the list, we're early, is Brett. B-R-E-T. That'll happen again, I think, later this evening. There's the first and latest forecast track from the Hurricane Center as of 11 o'clock this morning. It has 80 mile per hour hurricane force winds east of the Windwards, the Lesser Antilles, then moving in just north of Barbados uh, as we get towards, it looks like now Thursday night into Friday morning, and then starting to curve a little bit, perhaps towards Puerto Rico or up towards the eastern part of Hispaniola by the time we get into Friday night and Saturday morning. We'll have to see what it looks like at this particular point. But that's the current forecast. So a hurricane is scheduled, or forecast, I should say, to be in the eastern Caribbean by Friday into Saturday. Now, here are the forecast models. The stronger the storm, the, the, the models want to recurve it, especially the GFS. The weaker, it'll go further to the west, and that's pretty typical. This is the GFS model. It's the stronger of the two, especially when you compare it to the European. You can see where we are Wednesday. Notice as we get into Friday, it's starting to go a little bit further to the north of the current Hurricane Center track, kind of skirting the Windward Islands, the Leeward Islands there, and then moving north by the time we get into Sunday night into Monday and taking it out to sea. Probably the best case scenario with this particular storm. Now, the other side of that coin, though, is that the European model has a weak system here. It, it's not as weak. It does get a depression, or at least a storm, I should say, through Barbados by the time we get into Thursday. But as it enters the Caribbean, in the Eastern Caribbean, shear's gonna be on a little bit. And the European thinks, hey, this thing's gonna weaken quite a bit. And a weaker storm will generally go further to the west. A stronger storm will generally turn more to the north. And so the GFS thinks it's going to be stronger. It turns it to the north. European thinks it's going to be weaker. It takes it all the way across the southern parts of the Caribbean as we go through Saturday, Sunday, and Monday of this upcoming weekend and really doesn't do too much with it. Now, there's a second system. So if you, if you act now, we'll throw in another one for free. That is Tropical Depression 3. That's Invest 93L. TD3 was 92. This one doesn't look like it's going to do much. In fact, the GFS model, there's Depression 3, right? That's going to be Brett. There's the secondary one, 93. It looks like if this turns to the north, that one's going to be weak and get absorbed or at least just come up east of it. So I'm, I'm not concerned for Florida, at least for any of these at this particular point, but it's something that we have to watch. And it looks like the recurve will happen on the GFS model. Let's hope that happens. Now, look, you're saying it's June and we're looking at long track storms. Yes, this is not typical for this time of the year. And the main reason the water out here is very warm. Now, the fact that we're seeing two systems now doesn't surprise me. You need a, a good setup in the atmosphere to make one. You've got warm water, and then the setup around it is going to let us make another one. So it, it's not crazy that we're seeing two. It's just crazy that we're seeing any at all in that area. Typically, this time of the year, we're looking in the Gulf of Mexico and the Western Caribbean for storms to form. As we get through July, we're still only looking towards the eastern part of the Caribbean, east of Florida and still in the Gulf of Mexico. June, look at this, June, July are basically in the Caribbean. Notice what happens in August. By August 1st, we, the numbers really come up. We're still not really looking in August in the Central Atlantic for development. That really doesn't happen until we get into September. So what's happening out there right now is more typical for something that we would find in September in the hurricane season. And the main reason why is because of the fact that we have that warmer air, warmer water out there in the central Atlantic. You can see in October comes back closer to our area. And then as we get into November, we really drop the numbers altogether. Real fast, I do want to show you the shear. There's not a lot of shear around it right now. That's why it's forecast to strengthen. But look at the shear here. This actually protects us if it were to stay around. This is the GFS forecast. You can see there's not a lot of shear around it. That way it lets it get a little bit bigger. Most of it stays to the north. But by the time we get towards Thursday and Friday, if it holds on this track, you can see there's going to be a lot of shear here along Hispaniola and just to the north. So something that we'll keep a close eye on. The European forecast model, the shear, 
well, data is having a hard time showing up. There it is. You can see it has more shear on the system and then it thinks it will fall apart as a result. Either way, guys, we'll keep an eye on it. Florida does not look to be threatened at this time, but we will keep a close eye over the next several days.